Welcome to a victory edition of Chiefs Rewind. The Chiefs, six interceptions. They get eight turnovers to beat the New York Jets 24-3. Mitch Holtis with you, voice of the Chiefs, along with Chiefs reporter B.J. Kissel. Eight turnovers, <laughs> but six interceptions. And Ryan Fitzpatrick is not an interception thrower. No, he's not. He came in. He was the AFC reigning offensive player of the week. He had 374 yards last week against the Bills. So it's not like he was coming in. The Chiefs defense did this against a team that hasn't had success offensively. I mean, the Jets coming into this game had ranked as one of the best offenses in the NFL. They ranked sixth in yards, fourth in points. I mean, this was a potent offense, and the Chiefs defense just thoroughly dominated. Started by Marcus Peters, three red zone interceptions. Talk about all those picks. Three of those came inside the red zone. Jets finished 0 for 4 inside of there. Just an overall dominant performance. It made it even more special. Talk about the defense. They didn't have any sacks. Six interceptions. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's hard to get those numbers to figure out. But in 2013 and 15, the Chiefs lived by the giveaway takeaway. They were one of the leaders in the league, always there. And they came in minus two. That's going to change in this week. But let me ask you about complimentary football here. And I'll ask you about special teams. Because Dave Tobe is always teaching about making impact plays. What about the fumble recovery? We're going to have Demetrius Harris on later in the show. What about that play? Well, I think they saw it on tape last week when Jalen Marshall had coughed one up against the Bills. So the Dave Tobe's guys see that. They watch it on film. They know what's going on there. And that was a thing coming into the game. They could try to take it away from Jalen Marshall, and they did that. Those guys made a phenomenal play there. Anthony Sherman, one of the special teams captains, phenomenal special teams player. Uh, probably doesn't always get enough due, but made a phenomenal play. And Demetrius Harris, right guy in the right spot. And uh, they talk about Derek Johnson's uh, interception return. It was, it was pretty fun to watch a 30-plus-year-old DJ run down the field that way. Yeah, I said on the radio, though, that's the good news. The bad news, he had to go right back out on the field. <laughs> and he was huffing and puffing and blowing the house down. Okay, the other thing is the offense. And we're going to have Demetrius Harris on. We'll talk about his uh, return for a touchdown. Ten catches by the tight ends. What about in the first half, particularly getting Kelsey involved? There were some big plays, including a touchdown. They were. And they did a great job game planning in this, in this game. And Travis Kelsey obviously led the team in like six catches, 89 yards. Uh, but Alex Smith was spreading the ball around. It wasn't just that they were forcing it to Kel Kelsey every time. There were seven guys that had at least two, inter or two receptions in this game. So Smith, we knew coming into this game, he does a great job spreading around today, particularly the first half, was a great job spreading around. They third down early in the game, did a phenomenal job. Uh, uh, finding the opening guy and, and making plays. This is a good Jets team, a very good Jets team that came in with lots of confidence. Mm -hmm. But the Chiefs, with an unforgettable performance, with six interceptions <laughs> and eight turnovers gained, win 24-3. For more analysis, let's go to our Chiefs Kingdom studio. And former Chief Danon Hughes is joined by Chiefs reporter Pete Sweeney. Hello and welcome into, uh, inside the 65 Toss Power Trap Studios. After a Chiefs win 24-3 <laughs> dominant fashion, let's go to the videotape. Aside from just this game, it's Tony Richardson Day at Arad getting inducted into that Ring of Honor. You played with Tony. Yes. Uh, but, but the Jets coming in into this game uh, after a win against the Buffalo Bills where they were dominant in offense. Matt Forte specifically had three touchdowns in that game, but the Chiefs handled them early. Absolutely. When you came into this game and preparing for this game, you had to be concerned about the Jets' offense. This team had averaged over 416 yards total offense throughout their two games in this season, but the Chiefs' defense stepped up. A lot of question marks in this game coming into this season. Marcus Peters was not one of those question marks. Dare to test him on intermediate routes, and he'll make you pay. Comes up with the first interception of the day. A great job jumping the route and turning the field over. Third interception of the season for Peters. So the Chiefs get the ball back with a short field on the 35-yard line, and Alex Smith hits Travis Kelsey. Very, very athletic player. We know that in Travis Kelsey. Excellent job all day long. Good pass protection for the Chief. Alex Smith really does a nice job spreading the wealth around, throws to multiple receivers. And when you have an upper echelon running game going fast and going strong on your home turf, that makes it extremely difficult for opposing teams to come into Arrowhead and be successful. And in the past few weeks, you see Spencer Ware right there running tough once again. And so the Chiefs are in the red zone. Alex Smith finds Travis Kelsey has a little fun. Automatic mismatches with Travis Kelsey having to be guarded by linebackers. Too much speed, too much athleticism. And right here, he dives for the pylon. Ooh, a little swag. A little yeah, swag gets up, got touchdown. a little dance to him, too. You always know that Travis has something in the bag. 7 nothing Chiefs early, but the Jets just start struggling with turnovers. There's a fumble right there. Chiefs hop right on it. It was a sloppy day, a sloppy game. Did not really affect the Chiefs very much, but the Jets came in and coughed the ball up. Chiefs, right place, right time to be able to capitalize on those mistakes. So Alex Smith and the offense 
take back over. This Tyreek Hill kid, so fast <laughs> down the sideline. So fast, so quick, and now they're starting to find ways to get him the ball, you know, more opportunities to get him in space. Chris Conley comes through with a clutch catch in traffic, and then another shallow cross with Travis Kelsey able to get through two tackles and inside the five-yard line. Alex Smith on the roll, smart play. Nice job by Alex to settle for the field goal here. Chiefs end up getting the 27-yard field goal. It's good 10-0 late in the second quarter, but then watch this kickoff play. Special teams, I love to see guys capitalize on opportunities Whoop. on special teams. Another great job, big play by Harris, the big tight end, showing the speed, right place, right time, big hit by Desmond Moses, dislodges the ball, and right there you see the big man, number 84, Scamper in for the touchdown. A huge change of events for the Chiefs at that time, especially because it's been so difficult this season so far watching the Chiefs get going fast, get going early in the game, and they were able to do that today. Demetrius Harris couldn't have been in a better place <laughs> to get that football. And I think this, the thing you like about that first half, the Chiefs came out and they weren't slow. You know, no. the first two games we see those slow starts, but they came out fast. Absolutely. They came out, they had six first downs in the first quarter. They had 85 yards in that first quarter. They were able to put points on the board and capitalize on the mistakes of the Jets. This is the team, not just the offense or the defense, but this is the team we've been yearning to see all season long. If they can play like this and make t teams turn the ball over and capitalize with points on the board like they did, going to be very difficult for teams to compete against. So 17-3 to at the half. We move in to the third quarter. The Jets are 0 and 62 all time when trailing by 14 points at the half. That's courtesy of CBS. So you knew they would be up against it. Uh, and here we go. <laughs> Again, back to Tyreek Hill. Well, Tyreek Hill is a phenomenal player. We've seen him display a lot of quickness, a lot of speed, and big playmaking ability throughout training camp. And the special teams is often that stepchild of the game of football. But what they do is create great field position opportunities where big playmakers like Travis Kelsey can make those type of plays. So Kelsey gets the Chiefs into Jets territory, but watch this play. That looks like a touchdown to me. It's ruled a touchdown on the field. They'll go to the replay on this, call it a fumble into the end zone, actually a touchback. I disagree with that call. I think that's not enough to overturn a call. Whatever was called on the field, I'd agree with. They should have stuck with the touchdown. So the Jets really get a break right there, yes. and they ride this momentum. Offense starts to click right here. Well, this is where the defense really stepped up and really impressed me because although the Jets are getting some plays downfield, getting yards and chunks, it's a bend but don't break situation where the Chiefs, it's not a big game at this point. The Jets could score touchdowns, but the Chiefs seem to have the knack to stop them and force them into those errors. Eric Berry, the right place, right time, another deflected pass, and he makes them pay. Kind of have a feeling that that might start a little trend. We'll see as we <laughs> go on. But here you go. Ryan Fitzpatrick is a great quarterback. Finds his guy, Eric Decker, up well, in the middle. Well, we talked about it. Uh, you know, the Jets and Ryan Fitzpatrick have done a nice job. They averaged 279 yards passing per game. Came into this game, left out with just 188 yards passing and those six interceptions. Here's another one right here. Moving the ball downfield steadily. But once they got into the red zone, it seemed like the Chiefs tightened up things and were able to capitalize on those deflections. Second interception on the day for Marcus Peters. Four interceptions for Peters on the season. And then you see Fitzpatrick trying to challenge this Chiefs secondary again. There's Danny Sorensen with the pick. Well, they got some big receivers, and you have to throw it in, a, in an area where they can make plays. But again, the big playmakers for the Chiefs coming up big, and Derek Johnson, man, still a lot of gas in mm. his tank, Pete, and he shows it right here. Going back to those running back skills from Texas, I'm sure, in high school days, and he's, he's able to capitalize and get in the end zone. Johnson looking like he's 25 then. <laughs> DJ White with an interception yes, as well. Yes, the rookie comes in with the big play. Again, more opportunities by this Chiefs defense. They were on the field for a lot of time today because of those turnovers, and yet they did not break. Only gave up those three points. So the Chiefs win 24 to three, improved to two and one on the season. Now, Danon, with this game, 
you know, you, you get the loss last week. What did it say about this team to come out and dominate like that? Well, what it says is a lot. Is exactly what we thought this team was going to be. We thought this team could be a very opportunistic defense, very smart offense, not giving the ball away, a smart quarterback that can maneuver down the field, take what the defense gives them, and capitalize with a great running game. This great running game does not – uh, is not predicated on Jamal Charles. Spencer Ware has shown that he could be a phenomenal running back, a dual threat, and now you're putting touchdowns on the board. It was great to see Cairo Santos sit on the sideline for a while, only have the duties of kickoffs. We don't want to see him kick four field goals and leave a game with just 12 points. A great job getting in the red zone, scoring touchdowns, putting sixes instead of threes. The Chiefs right back into the right track. They win 24-3. When we come back, you'll get to hear from a very happy head coach. <laughs> Chiefs Rewind is brought to you by Volvo of Overland Park, home of the Red Friday Rally. Midwest Ford Dealers, the official car and truck of the Kansas City Chiefs. And by Sprint, the official wireless service provider of the Kansas City Chiefs.